Hey, Battle Bill, here with another video, and today we're going to get some more Ultra League Premier Cup battles. In the last video, I showed you my current team that I'm using for Ultra League Premier, and now in this video, I just want to test out some spice. There are a lot of new options that we can play around with and use in Ultra League battles due to it being the Premier meta, and I want to figure out which ones have the most play, which ones have no play at all, and which ones might have gotten a little bit of a boost in a change of moveset. So today's focus is going to be Haunch Crow because Brave Bird got a boost. So Haunch Crow's preferred moveset is now Snarl, Sky Attack, and Brave Bird. It doesn't need Dark Pulse in the Premier meta because there are no Giratina Alterns, no Cresselias, very lacking of Ghosts and Psychic Typings in the Premier meta. Yes, there are Gengars, but Snarl chunks away at Gengar pretty well. And aside from that, don't really need that Dark Typing for too much else. So. That's the moveset I'm going to be running on Honchkro today, and I technically have another Spice pick on this team, but we'll get into the team comp in a little bit. So, without further ado, before we jump into these battles, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Alright, let's get into these battles. Alright, let's talk about this team that I surrounded Honchkro with. It consists of Abomasnow and Swampert. Abomasnow is there to deal with the Lapras and Venusaur Core, and Abomasnow could be considered a Spice pick, but it's not really the focus Pokemon. It's going to have its moments to shine in this set, but Honchkrow definitely has some good plays throughout this set also. And then I have Swampert there to essentially try and take shields so that Honchkrow can end up in situations in endgame to throw Sky Attacks and Brave Birds that will go unshielded. So in this first matchup, I'm going up against a Polyrath. I swap in Swampert. So I'm worried about Abomasnow taking dynamic punches from the Polyrath, but then I swap and Swampert, and I'm like, you know, it's not a counter for Swampert. And then I look at the rest of my team, and I'm like, yeah, Honchkrow has Sky Attack and Brave Bird, but the Ice Punches from Polyrath deal super effective damage. So I'm like, Polyrath's going to give my entire team a, a, a pretty hard time here. So I try to play this out. I'm going for an Earthquake here. I gave up one of my shields already. I'm hoping to either take out the Polyrath of this Earthquake or get one of their shields, so I get one of their shields there, and I'm building up to my next charge move, and I try to click on it, but they outpace me, and at this point, I'm just like, alright, gotta let Swamper go down, they left in Polyrath for this, so the plan, now that at least I've gotten one of the shields, is I can bring in Haunch Crow, and I should be able to get to at least two Sky Attacks, to either get the shield, and then take out the Polyrath, and I won't have to use a shield on Haunch Crow, hopefully. I pulled up my switch timer there, I was going to try and catch an ice punch because I was just really starting to get irritated with this Polyrath, but at that point it was too late, I tanked it, and then we both, I was forced to swap, and I bring in my Obama Snow to go against the Snorlax. The reason why I was forced to swap is because I hit it as the charge move came through, and the game was like, nah, we're going to process it afterwards, and I was like, alright, I'll deal with that now, and I threw an energy ball, got the defense drop from energy ball, if you didn't know, I think it has a 10% chance to debuff your opponent's defense. It's not really used, like, it's a high energy move, so it's not like it's really spammed that often. You usually want to go with the Weather Ball, so you might not know that energy, energy Ball has that ability. And then they go for a Super Power, practically take out my Bomb Snow with it, lick me down. But because of that, I know the Snorlax is almost down, so I can Snarl it down. They go for another Super Power there, I shield it, and I'm able to Snarl down the Snorlax completely, and this situation is looking horrible, considering they have a shield. I have a Honchkrow loaded on energy, but they have two Pokemon left. I still have to deal with that Polyrath. So I get off one Sky Attack. This will take out the Polyrath's remaining health, or it'll get their last shield. It gets their last shield, and then I'm building up a little bit of extra energy, and they swap into the one Pokemon that's going to allow me to win this match, Gengar. I throw the Sky Attack, it does like a majority of its health, like 80%, and I'm able to snarl it down before it gets off any charge moves, so I can throw another Sky Attack at the Polyrath and win this first match after it looked so poor in the beginning of the setup, essentially. So Honchkrow came in clutch, that snarl ability to generate energy really allows it to spam and clutch end matchups just like that. Alright, so Haunch Crow clutched that last match. Let's see how the rest of these go. Let's see if Haunch Crow is able to do it again. And then we end up in an Obama Snow on a Crustle matchup. Respect to my opponent for bringing the Crustle out. You don't see any of those, but Crustle maxes out close to that 2500, 2600 range. So like if you get like a 12, 15, 15, I think that's like an Ultra League PvP hundo. Only reason why I know that is because I have a couple from Hatching Eggs, which I, 
always found odd, but obviously I saved them because they're PvP hundos. But I'm like, you know, how should I play this one out? Its bug moves are super effective, so I tried to pull a swap there to catch the next X scissor, was not able to. I know it's not exactly the tankiest, so my weather balls are doing some solid are so doing some solid damage to it. But it's still able to, you know survive after I dealt one and now I got the shield in the second one. So at that point I decided to finally get the swap through, or not decide to, I, that was my plan originally. Could do it the first time, got it the second time, throw an X scissor, Swampert will eat that, no problem. And then they leave their crustal in, and I can't mud shut it down, but then they swap into Dragonite, which kind of benefited me. I guess they wanted to get their energy back, but that allowed my Swampert to build up a bunch when they bring in Shadow Dragonite. And as much as these will be resisted because of Dragonite's Dragon typing, Shadow Dragonite is very glassy and does not want to see many Hydro Cannons, and Swampert can spam them. So again, the team is serving the purpose I set out for it. Swampert is spamming Hydro Cannons. It didn't get a shield, but this Dragonite is practically down at this point. It did get a good chunk of energy, so my plan is to let Swampert go down, bring in a Bomb of Snow, and hopefully farm it down. Just able to, couldn't Dragon Breath me down. Go for another Weather Ball. This will either take out the Crustle or it will get the remaining shields. It gets the last shield. I bring in Honchkrow, and I'm hoping I can like over farm against this Crustle. I didn't know how much energy they had, so I let this go through, even though x would have been super effective. It ends up being Rock Blast, which was super effective also, and did a lot more health than I prefer. And then they got to the x -Scissor relatively quickly after that, because they had farmed up a bunch before taking it out before, so I had to shield that. I still am able to over farm up to two sky attacks, and then they swap and they bring in Magnazone, and at that point, GG, they could have brought in a lot of Pokemon there, and I could have won the match, like the last one, but in this case, they brought in one Pokemon that has no problem tanking sky attacks or Brave Birds from Honchkrow, so I end up losing that match, unfortunately. So, as much as it didn't work out in that last match, the fact that Honchkrow has access to Snarl and is able to generate energy so quickly because it's such a great quick move for that, it having those two sky attacks would have beaten a lot of other Pokemon outside of something like Magnezone. So, the fact that it was able to put itself in that position could have led to success, unfortunately. Face the Pokemon that was going to resist the sky attacks, but not too many Pokemon want to see two sky attacks or a Brave Bird, so... Almost worked out there. Getting into the third match, I got an Obama Snow on a Venusaur lead here, which is a pretty positive lead for me. I shield, expecting a Sludge Bomb. They go for the Frenzy Plant bait. Then they swap into Lapras, and I'm like, I'm going to leave in Obama Snow for this, because that's what its job is. Hopefully, Honchkrow could then deal with the Venusaur later. Or I, do I just throw the... Oh, they shielded. That was such an odd glitch, because we see MP Tied, so it didn't show the fact that they shielded, and I was very confused on why it did no damage. They throw a Surf there, and I'm like, that's okay. Obama Snow can tank these Surfs. It resists it. No problem. And I'm just going to try and build up to another Energy Ball. I'm not even going to try to bait out the shield, because this will either do a solid chunk, or get the last shield like I want. That was the whole point of using a bomb of snow on Swampert is to generate energy, build it up, and get shields. And then I bring in Swampert because I want to keep a bomb of snow alive still. And Swampert does not really want to see that Venusaur, so I might as well use it against the Labras. Now, unfortunately, they got my last shield. They bring in the Venusaur, but they brought it in at a very poor time because Swampert had enough for a Hydro Cannon. So I'm going to be able to Hydro Cannon it, finish Hydro Cannon it. <laughs> I'm going to Hydro Cannon it and take out its remaining health. They're going to bring their Lapras back in, which is okay with me. They're going to go for what I think is an Ice Beam, ends up being an Ice Beam. But I should be able to get to an Earthquake before they get to a Surf. And then if they want, they'll be able to Surf me because the Earthquake's not going to take out the Lapras. It'll get it in the red. So again, unfortunately I wasn't able to save any shields for Honchkrow, but we're in a no shield, no shield situation. And if I could try to play it right, Honchkrow can get some energy and hopefully finish off their last Pokemon. So we'll see how this plays out. I do still have a Bomb of Snow left. I th yeah, I end up bringing a Bomb of Snow because Honchkrow does not want to see the Ice Shards. It would have dealt super effective damage to it. So I'm hoping to throw this Weather Ball, not take out the Lapras. I think, oh no, it did, did even less damage than I expected. And then they bring in this Pokemon. What is the name of this Pokemon? I think it's Gothahita, or that's a first form. And I was so confused on what I was seeing. And I'm like, I, I literally was like earlier in the video, I you don't need Dark Pulse, but Dark Pulse would have been beautiful here. But what I also realized was I could have just thrown the Brave Bird. Because who in God knows what, what moveset this Pokemon has. Apparently it has Rock Slide. Honchkrow definitely does not want to see Rock Slide. I get to another Sky Attack, but 
Now their Lapras can come in and Ice Shard my Honchkrow down, giving their Lapras a little bit of extra energy and letting it essentially get to a Surf before I can get to my Charge Room to take me out. If I would have Brave Birded and then use my Honchkrow to deal with the Lapras, I could have won this match, but like, that's just respect to your Spice Surf, because I had no idea what to do there. I learned my lesson in that last match, apparently that thing runs Rock Slide, but that's one of the benefits of running Spice sometimes, it really catches your opponents off guard, I was definitely caught off guard there, lesson learned, again, GG, respect to my opponent for it, let's get into the fourth match, we got Abomasnow on a Dragonite lead here, so a very positive lead, Powder Snows will be dealing double super effective damage, they swap into Swampert, so I'm Swampert, they swap into Slurlax, so I swap into Swampert, and they're going for a body slam immediately, and I'm not going to shield it because if I use my shield now, they could try and superpower later, which might be more beneficial for them in this matchup. Now, I go for the Earthquake here, and if this goes shielded, then I've made a huge mistake. And the Hydro Cannons are still technically more energy efficient, but it doesn't go shielded luckily, and it puts it in a nice HP range where one more Hydro Cannon will definitely take it out. So, I don't know if that's really necessarily the right play or not. I should really do my homework on some of those little, like, energy-specific damage type pieces of information. But, I just know Hydro Cannon, really good move. Typically go for it 9 times out of 10, depending on typings and whatnot. So, they're going for another charge move here. I know I can get to another Hydro Cannon as long as I don't get fast move desync. And, I'm going to shield this Body Slam up. I'm going to get to this Hydro Cannon. This will either get the last shield or take out the Snorlax. And knowing them, they'll probably want to shield it to get Switch Advantage. So I decide to swap so I don't get licked down. And I bring in Honchkrow because I want to try and Snarl down and get a huge energy advantage before they bring in whatever Pokemon they were going to bring in. So they're throwing their charge over here. This is definitely a Surf. It was way too quick. And Honchkrow does hang on. I have two Sky Attacks here. And we're going to find out how much two Sky Attacks due to a Lapras. If I just go straight for the Brave Bird, that wouldn't have been more damage than two Sky Attacks. So, and if I would have went for the Brave Bird, I just wouldn't have survived to get to another charge move afterwards. So two Sky Attacks gets Lapras pretty low, puts it in a nice HP range, and but then it was able to Ice Shard me down. Obama Snow still has all of its health and can come in and essentially eat whatever energy the Lapras wants to throw, and I can actually go for the Weather Ball because they didn't decide to throw any of their energy and essentially place myself in a winning situation. Because Dragonite, don't want to see a bomb or so, and that Snorlax is almost dead also. So let's see what they decide to do. They bring in the Snorlax, which is fine by me. I'm expecting this to be a superpower, and I also know the Dragonite has to get all the way to a Hurricane in order for do any serious damage to my Obama Snow. But then they swap immediately into Dragonite, and what I should have done, which was a partial mistake on my part, was I went for the Weather Ball right away, and it one-shot the Dragonite, which means that the Snorlax technically had a better chance of getting to the superpower. I should have over-farmed against the Dragonite because it was nowhere near a hurricane at that point. I really jumped the gun, but I was able to outpace the Snorlax and take the second match of the set. So Obama still really kind of carried things, but Honchro did do really good work against that Lapras. Two Sky Attacks, getting it down to the red, I'll take that. Alright, getting into the fifth match of the set, we got an Abomasnow on Excavalier lead here, and Abomasnow definitely doesn't want to see the counter damage from Excavalier, so I bring in Swampert, which is really my only counter to Excavalier, because even though Honchkrow can, well again, Excavalier is not really a fighter, it just has a fighting quick move of counter, so I call it a fake fighter, but in general, you can't really consider Honchkrow too much of a counter for actual fighters in the Ultra League Premier meta, just based on the fact that yes, it's a flying type, but it's also a dark type. So it takes neutral damage from all of those fighting type quick moves or charge moves, but again, in this case, quick moves because Excavalier runs counter. So if Honchkrow is in a situation like a two shield situation against a potential fighter or Excavalier for this example, it's most likely going to lose even if you play out the full two shields because those counters will add up based on its glassiness. So you really want Honchkrow in those situations in the end game where it could maybe have a one shield to no shield advantage or it could be in a zero shield situation where it has a little bit of extra energy so it can get off those sky attacks or brave birds to deal the high damage and again that would be super effective to the fighters then. But if you're in a two shield, two shield situation with Honchkrow, it's most likely not surviving the quick move damage dealt to it to even win out the two shields in 
what you would think would be a positive situation against a fighting type Pokemon. So, my opponent threw a Skull Bash there, and I have to now go for this Weather Bowl, because I cannot Powder Snow the Lapras down, since it just boosted its defense. So now that I've taken down the Lapras, I'm going to wait for the Excavalier to come in. I do bring in the Honchko here, because I have that one shield to no shield advantage, and they counter with a Dragonite, and I really was tempted to go for Sky Attack, but I'm like, I need to one hit this Dragonite. So I go for the Brave Bird, and I went and double checked the simulation. If I didn't go for the Brave Bird here, the Dragonite would have survived, so I didn't have a choice there. Luckily, even though Honchkrow's defense was debuffed, I was still able to get to a Sky Attack, which got Excavalier really, really low, but I have the worst last Pokemon to try and go up against the Scavalier, and I didn't even get a chance to use that shield and end up losing the match just based on those super effective counters. But Honchkrow did get me really close there. So again, I still consider that a slight positive. All right, so even though I didn't have a positive set here with Honchkrow, I did go two and three. I do believe it has some positives, Again, heed to the warnings and the negatives I mentioned. I definitely believe it has play. There's a reason why PV Poke lists it so high on its Ultra League meta, but use at your own risk and make sure it's surrounded by bulk because Honchkrow is definitely going to need the shields. Now, if there's a Spice Pokemon you want me to try, let me know in the comment section. I will definitely try to form the best team of three around it and we can weigh the pros and cons of it like we did similarly in this video. Other than that, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.